Hi guys, so today's character art video is going to be a little different than usual. We're still going to be getting a time lapse of the character art, which in this case is of Mia from Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. And we're still going to be looking at some other artists' depictions of her at the end of the video, giving some shout outs and recognition to people who are extremely talented. But because I've only read the first Nevernight book, I didn't quite feel qualified enough to do the character bio portion of this video. So I asked the most qualified person I can think of aside from Jay Kristoff himself, which would be Piera Ford. She graciously said yes, I am so excited. But anyway, without further ado, let's go on to her character bio for Mia from Nevernight. First of all, a huge thanks to Elliot for having me. I've been a fan of hers for a while now and being asked to collaborate is a huge honor and especially on something like this. I'll try to keep it mostly spoiler free, but I will give a warning if I deviate. And there may also be some coarse language in this video, but if you've read this book, I promise it's God speak in comparison. Nevernight by Jay Kristoff follows Mia Corvair, a 16 year old girl who, after the execution of her entire family, journeys to a fabled school for assassins to learn the arts of death in order to seek revenge against those who wronged her. Since we have Elliot's incredible artwork to go off, we'll start with a physical rundown of our murderous little bitch. Mia is originally described as a scrawny, pale slip of a thing. Short, with crow dark eyes, sunken cheekbones, and a ghostly pallor. Long black hair and a crooked, self-inflicted fringe, no ass, a once-broken nose, and nothing that would make you look twice at her on the street. Trick, another character in the novel and my precious son, gifts Mia the nickname Pale Daughter. Since Nevernight takes from ancient Roman and Venusian influence, I'd be so bold as to say Mia is of Italian heritage. Mia was born of the union between a lower-class Lycian woman and a high-born noble. When we meet her, she's ten years old and being schooled in the ways of high society. This lends into her high lingo accent and almost British undertones. After the loss of her family and spending the following six years living with Mercurio, her mentor and an ex-assassin of the same school she aims to attend, you notice her accent slowly wears down, her language becomes a lot more vulgar, and those ten years of tutors, lessons, and grammar etiquette slip softly out the window and away on a dusty breeze. Mia is blunt, confident, almost cocky at times, vulgar, and takes no shit from anyone. She's driven in her quest for revenge, and willing to do whatever it takes to get there. But down in that empty chest cavity still beats a heart, as cold and as dead as she and others claim it to be, we see the hypocrisy of it as she forms relationships with characters throughout the series. Kristoff calls Mia a terrible person with shit morals and few good graces. Considering the large number of us that relate to Mia, I wonder what that says about us. As a ten-year-old, Mia comes into her power as a Darken, one that can control and work shadows. During the events following the death of her parents, Mia is joined by a demon in the shape of a cat. Mr. Kindly is introduced as a translucent, two-dimensional, not-cat shadow passenger and stays with Mia throughout her lifetime as a companion, a dark conscience, and often comic relief. Mr. Kindly says that before Mia, he was just a slither of darkness searching for someone like him. He mentions when he came to her, he took the shape of something familiar and comfortable to her. And considering that in the earlier chapters, Mia had just lost her kitten to the same people who murdered her family, Mr. Kindly took on the shape of a cat. Mr. Kindly appears as a cat, visible to any who look close enough, but can also ride in Mia's shadow, blending in and making it dark enough for two. This lends to Mia's other abilities as the Darken. She mentions she doesn't know much about the Darken and has never met another to ask. During her time at the Red Church, she also seeks answers to these questions. Mia's other abilities include her being able to cloak herself in shadows, appear invisible to the world around her whilst rendering herself somewhat blind whilst using that ability. Her abilities are enhanced during True Dark, the only time in the world when it is full night, which occurs every two years, and is hindered by True Light as well as anything blessed or pertaining to the God of Light, Ah, and his disciples. Mia is often considered blessed by the mother, Naya, the goddess of night, sister wife to Ah. Darken are feared, and Mia is told that whilst she may be blessed, that her abilities will earn her no favour in the church, and she will still have to work just as hard as all the other acolytes if she wants to survive. For those of you who don't know, I was lucky enough to recently create a Nevernight film adaptation, in which I play Mia. If you're wondering why this strange woman was voicing over Elliot's work. The three episodes will focus on Mia's getting to the Red Church, and will be available for free on my YouTube channel later this year. I'll let Elliot tell you more about it. But aside from that, Dark Dawn, the third and final book in the trilogy, was recently released. And if you are a fan of murderous bisexual bitches with bad mouths and shadow cat powers, I highly recommend you pick up the series because it will not disappoint. 
Once again, thanks to Elliot for having me, and I'll let her take over. Obviously, again, a huge thank you to Piera for being nice enough to chat with us about Mia. She's been working incredibly hard. Like she said, the adaptation is going to show up on her channel, and I wanted to show a little bit of the camera test that she had put up. For those of you that haven't seen it, here's a little bit of a look of it. She clarifies that this, of course, is not the final look of the show, but it gives you a little bit of a sneak peek, a little bit of a taste of what it's going to look like. And I'm already incredibly impressed. I think you should, of course, go watch the actual sneak peek camera test because hearing their voices just adds an extra layer to it. But I also just want to add I think it's incredibly moving and inspiring that Piera is not only making her dream come true and adapting this, but making a lot of other people's favorite story come to life. Lastly, of course, I want to show some love for some other artists who've depicted Mia, so be sure to check them out as well. I'll have all of them linked in the description bar down below. Thank you so much for watching. A big thank you again to Piera. And of course, check out all of these artists. They're all incredibly talented. If you are interested in seeing some of my artwork early or you just want to support my channel, my art, all that stuff, I'll have my Patreon linked. Patrons always get sneak peeks of all my art as well as getting to vote on stuff that they want me to draw. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, I'll have my playlist linked and I'll see you guys later. Bye.